When do you start writing every day? About 11 o'clock. I usually roll out of bed and have my routine where I'll, you know, say some prayers, meditate a little bit, not much. Um, read the news, see what's going on, and then pack up and usually go over to the coffee shop and start writing. So, But I'm also a night owl too, so I stay up late writing. So it's it's sporadic because I'm usually working, juggling like four or five different things at one time. So um, I'm kind of hop, usually hopping around to make sure I'm kind of on top of whatever needs to be done first. So. How long are you writing for? Um, it, it's on and off and pretty much all day. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll be up late watching TV, but I still have my laptop on and writing a little bit. So, you know, I, it depends. If I have a writing assignment, then I'm, uh, I'll be more structured in it as far that I'll make sure that I focus on that and then try to like have fun and have a life the rest of the time that I'm not writing. But if I'm in a stage where I'm like working on four or five different things, trying to get them off the ground, then I'm just, I'm usually writing quite a, quite a bit. Hmm, interesting. So you go to the coffee shop. Do you ever write here in this beautiful um, apartment? Sometimes, but if I stay here, I get very distracted. Like it's, you know, I want to watch TV. I want to take a nap. You know, I'm very comfortable here. So um, I like to go out to the coffee shop because I get my socializing done too because I, you know, have friends there and stuff like that. So I like to get out and do that as well. There's a lot of regulars there that write yeah. too? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So Nice. A lot do, of writers. <laughs> do they ask you what you're writing on or no one really asks that? They just kind no, of... No, people will, yeah, people will talk to you. And especially if you go there a long time and you've made friends with people, they, they kind of know what you're up to and... You know, if they follow you on social media and you're talking about stuff, they'll be, they'll ask you about what you're doing and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty it's fun. It's you know it's very transitory though too because there's a couple of regulars, but you know a lot of the writers will, you know, if they move then they'll go to another coffee shop or they'll go work at like the WGA has a you know space to work at or people like rent spaces now, which I'm actually thinking about doing because I I think I broke it down and some I forgot what the place is called, but there's a company where you can like go rent a space an office space and um i can't remember any of these names but um i I, we, I did the math and it's like oh well for the cop cup of a, like a starbucks coffee and a donut <laughs> every day i could actually rent this place for a month and they have free coffee all day but i i drink tea so i don't know i have mm -hmm. to check and make sure they have tea it's um, probably not as good as starbucks though no no <laughs> no but it's like it's a cool like you can get like an, a, a desk and like a right. computer and you have your own little sp spot so it you know it and it does if you're actually leaving your place to go to work. It does kind of put you in a different mindset. Because even if I'm walking to Starbucks, even though I'm, I'm, no, I'm going there to work, it's like I'm going to see my friends and I'm going to, you know, be distracted. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So it's, it, there is some definitely some wisdom to having like a, a writing space um, that's like an office, you know. So that's, that's kind of – I'll do that at some point. I haven't done that yet. But, you know, I'll have a place where I'll have like an office that's just a separate – you know, building aside from where I'm, you know, where I'm living. Right. Yeah. I was always opposed to coffee shop writing for the longest time. And then I noticed that if you have headphones on yeah. and you can still sort of see what's going on around you, it actually is invigorating. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're working on, even if you're not screenwriting, you're just working on something. Right. I the was head, surprised you have to have the that. headset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the headphones. Those are important because otherwise people just come and start talking to you. Oh, um, that's true. Yeah, it's a good buffer. It's a good social buffer, yeah, yeah to absolutely. have those on. But also libraries, too. I mean, I'm just surprised that it actually it does feed you. And yeah. I was opposed to it for the longest time. And I, I can tell now why people need to get out of the house. Because yeah. you, you need that little segue from being in your home to you know, your brain going, okay, we're going to work now. And it's hard to, you know, if I'm just going from my bedroom to the living room, it's hard to just sit over here and say, okay, turn on my work brain. Because then I'm like, wait, what's on right. TV? And I'm going to take a nap really quick and yeah. Right. Or, or if I see an interesting article on like Flipboard or Pocket or something and then I'm like, let me just read this and yeah. then and, and I'm distracted. So yeah. Once you get derailed, then it's kind of, right. you have to work to get the focus back again. Would you say you're very disciplined when you know that you need to get these four things done that you're pretty I'm, good? Yeah. I think my friends think I'm more disciplined than I am. Like I, I think I could probably be more disciplined. I, I, I do work hard though, but it's, it's, um, I guess I am, I guess I am, but in my brain, I'm not disciplined enough. And my friends are like, you're so disciplined. I'm like, eh, I feel like I'd be doing more if I was more disciplined. But I'm, I'm usually always juggling a lot at the same time. So, um, But you always, always want to make sure you don't have more on your plate than you can like really dedicate quality time to. So I've definitely learned the art of saying no as I've gotten older. Because when you're young, you want to say yes to everything because you think, oh, this could be my, you know, 
these three opportunities could be the only thing I, things I ever get. So you're always like saying yes to everything. And as you get older, you start realizing like, you know, it's okay to say no to stuff if you're not passionate about it or if you don't think you'll have the time to, to really do it. And I've done that where I'm like, this really isn't my thing and I don't think I'm the best writer for it. So, you know, I know a lot of writers that will take, you know, jobs just to have a job. And unless I think I, it's something that I could do justice to, I'm not going to take it on as a, as a job. Unless it's a challenge. Sometimes there have been things where people have brought me projects where I'm like, this isn't my wheelhouse, but it would be really fun to try to write it. So then I'll do that. But it's got to be something that really strikes a chord with me. Do you know any writers that write eight to ten hours a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so do they usually, I mean, I'm assuming they stop for lunch or they do something. Yeah, to, yeah, to I mean, yeah, I know that I have a lot of writer friends that they, they do, if they're not on staff, they're, they're very much like they treat it like a nine to five job. So they'll, you know, get up in the morning, they'll do their thing, they'll write till lunchtime, they'll take lunch, they'll write till five and they'll stop writing for the day. Um, mm. And that's, a, again, that's, I think that's great if you're, if you're working on one thing at a time, you, I think you have the luxury of doing that more. I think if you're trying to do two or three projects at the same time, then it's harder to to do that, but it, you can do it. You know, I, I certainly have friends that, have, that, that do it, you know. Mm. 